Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart for this absolutely wonderful occasion for the ordination of our eight Holy Cross deacons. It's a pleasure and a, an honor to have all of you here to, to celebrate this great su sacrament of holy orders for these eight young men. Hopefully, most of you got a copy of the program. Our opening hymn will be All Creatures of Our God and King. On such an occasion, I know it's not necessary for me to, for you to, to say to you, please sing with full heart and voice. I know you'll do that on this wonderful occasion. We'll begin shortly. I believe we're almost ready to begin, but just a few minutes and we will start. Thank you very much.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. And happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. Easter. I think we should still say that people may look at you like you don't know the day or anything, but today is Easter. We celebrate, first and foremost, Jesus Christ has been raised from the dead. Everything has been made new. All is made well again. So that's why we gather, to celebrate the resurrection in this Eucharist. Oh, we also gather to celebrate an ordination for eight of our brothers. They will be ordained priests for the service of the church. And now we come together to ask God for forgiveness and his grace and his mercy as we call to mind our sins. Muy bienvenidos a todos. Este es un día muy especial para todos nosotros en la congregación y en toda la iglesia también. Preparémonos bien a celebrar esos sagrados misterios por reconocer nuestros pecados. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, Whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them, on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one spirit, as you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. And he gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors and teachers, to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the extent of the full stature of Christ. The word of the Lord.
the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions, who were mourning and weeping, When they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, He appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'll take it. I'll take it. Let those who are to be ordained priests please rise. The Reverend Mr. Edward James Dolphin of the Congregation of Holy Cross. The Reverend Mr. Nicholas Henry Guiney of the Congregation of Holy Cross. The Reverend Mr. Stephen Anthony Jacobowski of the Congregation of Holy Cross. The Reverend Mr. Ryan Patrick Kerr of the Congregation of Holy Cross the Reverend Mr. Tyler Carter Kripke of the Congregation of Holy Cross, the Reverend Mr. Peter Andrew Puleo of the Congregation of Holy Cross, the Reverend Mr. Michael Francis Ryan of the Congregation of Holy Cross, the Reverend Mr. Brian Joseph Vetter of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Do you know them to be worthy? Upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation and training, as well as upon my own personal knowledge and with the consent of the provincial council, I testify that they are and have been found worthy. I have relied as well upon the recommendations of the people of God whom our brothers have served this past year. And so I invite their representatives to come forward and testify that these men. Our brothers have been. 
Good afternoon, Bishop Walk. My name is Joshua Johnson. I'm a freshman studying civil engineering at the University of Notre Dame, and I'm the director of faith in Notre Dame student government. It's my honor to present Deacon Ed Dolphin, director of the smartest, strongest, and humblest men in Dillon Hall. <laughs> deacon Ed has faithfully served Dillon and Notre Dame since his ordination as a deacon. In his homilies, he delivers profound insights on what God has to offer us in that moment. His homilies are never too long or too boring or too hard to follow. He preaches with unique wisdom and gentleness. He conveys spiritual lessons that tug on the heartstrings, that stir within the soul the desire for God. Additionally, Deacon Ed regularly serves the entire Notre Dame community by assisting at the Basilica on feast days or from visit, visits from Bishop Rhodes. He is a regular with Father Joe at Dylan's Milkshake Masses. Outside of his liturgical ministry, Deacon Ed ensures that the men of Dylan Hall feel at home, cared for, and have a true Christian brotherhood in the hall. Deacon Ed holds his iconic Meatball Mondays, a chance for guys to take a break and enjoy really delicious meatballs. His home, his room, sorry, his room is always open for anyone to stop by and say hi or chat about whatever is on his mind. Dylan Hall is blessed to have Deacon Ed as our rector. The campus community would be fortunate to have him as a priest. And therefore, I enthusiastically recommend Deacon Ed Dolphin, CSC, for ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Aiden Sanchez, and I'm a student at University of Portland. I'm here today to recommend, with unbridled enthusiasm, Deacon Nicholas Guiney to the priesthood. As a resident of Christie Hall, where Deacon Nick serves as our hall director, I've had the opportunity to witness him become a true servant leader of our UP community. Every Monday evening at 10 p.m., members of the Christie Hall community gather to celebrate Mass in our chapel. There, one can hear Deacon Nick proclaiming and preaching the Word of God through his engaging and relatable homilies. Every day, Deacon Nick lives the Word of God by how he lovingly interacts with others. As described by various members of our UP community, Deacon Nick is passionate, caring, zealous, dedicated, supportive, authentic, and is described by multiple Christie residents, a homie. Students, faculty, and staff alike all know that Deacon Nick is someone we can rely on, someone who will listen, and someone who will be there. Deacon Nick is a true beacon of hope on the bluff. Blessed Basil Moreau said, with eyes of faith, consider the greatness of your mission and the wonderful amount of good you can accomplish. I am inspired by Deacon Nick's answer to God's call, whether by supporting UP's faith formation program or our thoughtful daily conversations, it is clear that he is a man of God ready to gladly and humbly serve the church. Therefore, it is my honor to proudly recommend Deacon Nick Guiney for ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Afternoon, Bishop Bill. Uh, we are the Boyers, your favorite family from uh, St. Ignatius, where you served as pastor before Father John. I'm Randy, this is my wife Mia, and children Marissa, Caleb, and Luke. Um, we're here to speak on behalf of uh, Deacon Stephen Jakubowski, who we uh, know and love. We first met Steve when he arrived as a summer seminarian in 2021. He jumped right into the life of our parish, and his infectious signature laugh brought us joy, and still does to this day. That summer went very quickly, but it was memorable, so we were thrilled when he was assigned to be with us for his transitional uh, deaconate year. Deacon Steve has already made a big impact on our parish and school community. We have seen the Holy Spirit work through him. He assists at English and Spanish masses, regularly sharing his beautiful voice and pastoral presence. He is active with faith formation, baptisms, and marriage preparation, including our very own con validation last October and his homilies show us how to live the word of God in our everyday life. While very busy with our parish's uh, many ministries, 
Deacon still makes time to be at our school every day greeting students, including these two guys here, with high fives and fist bumps. His involvement with our students continues the Holy Cross tradition of educating the minds and hearts of children. Um, and it's our privilege to recommend Deacon Steve for ordination of priesthood. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Jessica Crockett Murphy. I am a student representing the Stonehill College community and I have the honor of presenting Ryan Patrick Kerr as a candidate for the priesthood. Deacon Ryan joined our community not long ago, but his time here shows a constant commitment to every student that walks through his door and the mission of the Congregation of Holy Cross. Deacon Ryan has given new life to the Office of Campus Ministry with his contribution to our retreats, chapel choir, service programs, student food pantry, and our liturgical services as a very passionate homilist and in showing unwavering dedication to prayer during the Eucharistic consecration. In speaking with several candidates in the confirmation classes he oversees, it is clear that Deacon Ryan especially excels in this role, growing their personal faith lives, offering insights to topics they're struggling with, and serving as a constant support system for their journey. I have been blessed myself to have spent many, many hours talking about various theological concepts with him, and his wisdom and compassion has grown my faith exponentially. Deacon Ryan embodies Christ every single day in his love for all people, his love for his work, and for his love of the faith, and stands as a testament of the ministerial capabilities and charisms needed within a priest. Therefore, is these qualities and so many more that cannot be fully defined in words that all of us in the Stonehill College community recommend Deacon Ryan Kerr for ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Matthew 7, 15 through 16. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. While I've only known Deacon Tyler for a short time, it has been immediately evident that he is a man of God. I first met him in the classroom as Dr. Kreitke, my engineering professor. Being a lowly freshman with no prior engineering experience, he helped guide me through it, even if it meant telling me not to play with all the fun toys, I mean tools, something about me hurting myself or burning down the building, meh. During my time in Dr. Kreitke's class, I had plenty of somewhat silly questions, like what is Ohm's law, which I definitely still remember, sorry about that. <laughs> How do I make a circuit, and what is the maximum voltage the LEDs can take before they explode? Whenever I had a question or needed help, he gave up his time in and outside of office hours. He was the same in and out of class, recognizing his students around campus, smiling and saying hello. When I came to him with any biblical questions, he always took the time to chat and help explain. It gave me the opportunity to know him as both Deacon Tyler and Dr. Kreitke, a teacher in the faith and the classroom. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. All characteristics I have seen throughout knowing and interacting with Deacon Tyler. I see and feel the light of God in him and everything he does, even when he gave me a B and or took away the soldering iron. Very silly. I have witnessed firsthand his unwavering dedication and profound commitment to serving God in the community. There's no one I could recommend more for ordination. Thanks, thank you. Good afternoon, Bishop. My name is Melissa Green, and I'm joined by my family. We're from St. Joseph Parish and grade school here in South Bend. Our sons are students of Deacon Peters and I serve as principal there. We are honored to testify to the readiness of Deacon Peter Paleo for ordination to the priesthood. We know from our many interactions with Deacon Peter inside and outside of the classroom that God has given him a gifted mind so that he may know him, a loving heart that he strives to attach to Christ, and a great zeal for serving others. Even before we got to meet him, 
we heard from others about Deacon Peter's remarkable intelligence. But as anyone who studies ba Blessed Basil Moreau knows, one's pursuit of a life in Christ does not end with the mind. We can attest that at St. Joseph, Deacon Peter has coupled mind and heart to lead students, teachers, and parishioners toward a better understanding of God's loving plan. As a religion teacher, he helps sixth graders to know salvation history. He invites seventh graders to know the gifts of creation through the theology of the body curriculum. And he encourages teachers to more deeply embrace their vocations by teaching us about Moreau and the Congregation of Holy Cross at our faith formation sessions. Deacon Peter has made God known, loved, and served in our St. Joseph community in countless ways, and we enthusiastically recommend him for ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Good afternoon, Bishop Block. My name is Elliot Thompson, and we represent O'Neill Family Hall, where Deacon Mike Ryan once lived as a resident, served as a seminarian, and now leads as rector. Before joining the seminary, Deacon Mike worked as an engineer building skyscrapers. He now works with God's grace by building the kingdom of God. Deacon Mike has demonstrated pastoral generosity by shepherding the men of O'Neill, providing daily coffee in our lobby, and attending to residents facing health challenges, most notably when one of our residents managed to spear his arm on a door handle in the first week of Deacon Mike's rectorship. <laughs> in addition, Deacon Mike's dedication to the sacraments and word inspires us in O'Neill. He leads Eucharistic Adoration Tuesday nights and organizes opportunities for confession. He oversees the hall retreat and assists at masses. In fact, Deacon Mike's excellent preaching often draws upon his engineering experience and large family. Churchgoers in O'Neill often hear stories about having 10 siblings, load-bearing walls, and the importance of surveying targets. <laughs> his preaching helps us embrace our discipleship as sisters and brothers and co-builders of God's kingdom. Bishop Walk, two things are notable about O'Neill. First, our dorm mascot is the angry mob. Second, to build community, we gift each other nicknames. With this in mind, Bishop Walk, prevent the mob from becoming even angrier by conferring a new moniker on our mentor. So after this liturgy, Deacon Mike Ryan might return to O'Neill as Father Michael Ryan, CSC. It is with great joy the O'Neill community humbly recommends Deacon Mike for ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Thank you. Hola, Monseñor. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Alexandra Marín y este niño que está aquí se llama Luis. We come from the school and parish of San Alberto here in South Bend. We are in seventh grade and our homeroom teacher is Deacon Brian Vetter. He is also our science and religion teacher. Today, I am here to testify to the readiness of Deacon Brian for his ordination to the priesthood. Deacon Brian not only teaches us about religion in class, but he also celebrates the sacraments with us. Having the same person in the classroom with us every day, who is also the one who is up on the altar during mass, makes me feel like an important part of the church. It makes me want to siempre ser un servidor en el altar como él lo es. Deacon Brian's choice to not only be a priest, but also his choice to be a teacher and to help us daily prepare for our future. 
inspires me to be a better person. El Diácono Brian empezó con nuestra comunidad este año y él siempre ha sido parte de eventos que son parte de la escuela o de la iglesia. Deacon Brian started with our community this year and he is always eager to be part of events and to minister to those in need. Therefore, we heartily recommend Deacon Brian Vetter for his ordination to the priesthood. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these brothers, these our brothers, for the order of the priesthood. Praise God in his son Jesus Christ, who was raised from the dead to give us eternal life. As I said at the beginning of our mass, our liturgy, that's why we are here. That's why we celebrate every mass. We celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I am sorry to disappoint you, Nick, Ed, Steve, Ryan, Brian, Tyler, Mike, and Peter. But this is not all about you. <laughs> I know it's a big day and you prepared for 10 years or more your whole life. I know, I know. But this really is about Jesus Christ. Every time we gather here, we celebrate Jesus Christ, his passion, death, and resurrection, which is not only our hope, it is our life, it is our eternal life with God. And that's why we celebrate today. And then we have those wonderful testimonials. Thank you very much. Not Many congregations or dioceses do that. You know, all that's really required is that our provincial, Father Bill Lee says, we think they're worthy, they're, and then we show our applause, show our, our appreciation by applauding. But we in the Congregation of Holy Cross still do this. We always try to limit it because it can go on and on, but we, I love that we do this. And it almost sounds like a canonization instead of an ordination. Someone said smartest, strongest, best smelling person or something like that. <laughs> and the best smelling person in Dillon, well, that'd be, that, that's not hard to do, I suppose. <laughs> Maybe it is hard to do. Sorry, I lived in Zom Hall, so anyway. Um, but after all of that, after hearing from, well, the readings, after hearing you be presented to this congregation, and Father Bill Lease, our provincial, after he says, he says you are ready, then the testimonials, then the applause, which doesn't mean congratulations, you haven't done anything yet. That really means we, are, we agree, we think this should happen. But after hearing all of that, you get one word. Well, before that. You don't get to ex explain away everything that happened. You don't get to justify why you did things in life. You don't get to confess your sins or anything like that or put your own credentials out there, you get one word, and you already said it. Present. Let me translate that word in English, if I can, that one word, even though it's one word. I think, if I may be so bold to say, it means something like this. I come before you, frightened, scared, anxious about the future, but sure that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I come before you well aware of my weaknesses, my sins, my troubles, my worries, my anxieties, my fears. I come before you as one who studied and was formed for many years for this. I come before you as a man with a heart to love the Lord and to show you how to do the same. I come before you as someone like the apostles who were ordinary men, but whose hearts burned with zeal for the Lord and the gospel. 
I come before you ready to do this. Or as one young man said in my diocese, I feel like a thoroughbred who's been put into the gates before the Kentucky Derby. In a word, present. You are like Job who, when invited by God to offer critique or ask questions, was humbled and was silent. He said, I will put my hand over my mouth and say no more. You are like Abraham and Moses and Samuel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Mary and Joseph and the apostles and the saints, who basically also said an astonishingly, had an astonishingly economy of words in just saying, here I am, Lord, present. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Let it be done to me according to your word. The Holy Spirit made their hearts and makes your hearts docile and malleable and faithful so that you show up, you, you say present, and God, the Holy Spirit, will do the rest. Present. You know Psalm 108 well from the Liturgy of the Hours. And even if you don't know the number, I didn't, I had to look it up, you know the first line well. We all do, all of us religious, all of us who pray the office daily. My heart is ready, O oh God. My heart is ready. That should be a prayer that just falls from your lips constantly, every day, before every Mass. I said it as I was coming up here. It should be something that we say just even unconsciously, subconsciously. My heart is ready, God. I put myself before you. I am present. Speak in and through me. And all of us, all of us, not just you, but all of us throughout our lives are asked to put ourselves before the Lord and say present. One thing about the sacraments that I've learned as a bishop, I'm a slow learner, but that you don't, you don't do the sacraments, you don't make them, you don't earn them. We receive the sacraments. The new language, well, it's, it's about 10, 14 years old now, the newer, newer translation of all of the liturgies and the sacraments really emphasizes that. In, in the past, we said when, a parent, when parents would bring their child to be baptized, we would say, is it your will that your daughter should be baptized? Now we say, is it your will that your son should receive baptism? It's a small little change, but it reminds us that we receive baptism. We receive confirmation. We receive forgiveness and reconciliation. You receive holy orders. A married couple receives the gift and the grace of matrimony. One receives the gift of the anointing of the sick. It is God who pours into our hearts all that we need. We heard it in the second reading, so that the holy ones, you and me, may be equipped for holiness, so that God may build up the church. And now, brothers, you are taking a further step. Thanks be to God. We love you. We are proud of you. And we need you in the church. You are acting now, you will act, in persona Christi Capitis, in the person of Christ the head. In Christ's name and with his authority, you will teach and guide and nourish the holy people of God. It is daunting. It is impossible, really, for mere mortals. But do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will take care of everything. God loves you. God is proud of you, not just because you're here being ordained, but because you are present to him. Brothers, I just, my only other advice is something you know well. Pray. Pray often. Not only my heart is ready, O oh God, my heart is ready, but pray that God may bless you, forgive you, strengthen you, and guide you as you guide all of us. And brothers and sisters, please, please, please pray for your priests. Pray for these and all of those who serve us. Pray for the brothers in Holy Cross and the sisters, all of us who serve you. Please pray for us. I tell people back home, if I know that people are praying for me, and I do, I can do anything. You and I can do anything if we're praying for each other and supporting each other. Just this week, I, my nephew was visiting me with his little ones, and I helped to put the little ones to bed and pray with them. And just before she closed her precious little eyes, my little great niece said, and God bless Uncle Bill. Make him strong and safe always. 
And I felt like, man, I could take on anyone, the devil or anything, right there. So if we pray for each other, we can do anything. Let us continue to do that. Finally, I speak to you in the congregation and you who are watching live stream as well. Moments like this can be a time of rebirth and renewal for you. Maybe there are some, I'm guessing there are a lot here, who has, whose faith has grown tepid a bit. And maybe this could be the spark that, that makes you more excited about following the Lord, especially in his church. Maybe this is something in your heart is moving you to say in your heart, present, speak, Lord, to me. If we keep putting ourselves out there, God will do amazing things, not just for you, but for our church and our world. There is a great deal of hope and joy and happiness right here in this basilica and those watching as well. If we keep that up, if we share that with the world, there is nothing, no one and no thing that could ever harm us. May God bless you, my brothers, today, especially on this very important day, but all the days of your holy lives as priests. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your service. May God bless you and strengthen you and make you strong in, your ser in his service. May you always respond with joy in your heart and conviction in your soul. Present. Dear sons, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? I do. Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Okay. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment.
do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to the, your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. promise respect and obedience to the diocesan bishop and to your legitimate superior? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour forth heavenly gifts in abundance on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood. of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, Pray for us. Saint Edward, pray for us. Saint 
Nicholas. Pray for us. Saint Patrick. Pray for us. Blessed Basil Moreau. Pray for us. Saint Andre Bessat. Pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God. Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to us sinners. Lord, we ask be our partner. Govern and protect your holy church. Lord, we ask be our partner. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask be our partner. Bless these chosen men. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Comfort all the troubled and afflicted with your mercy. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Strengthen us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, we ask you be our partner. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Hear us, we pray, O Lord our God and pour out upon these, your servants, the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that you may surround with your rich and unfailing gifts those whom we present to your fatherly care or consecration. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please be seated.
please stand. Steps, bottom step, bottom step. Draw near, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when, your, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed, prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness these helpers whom we need for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of their manner of life, may they inspire right conduct. May they be trustworthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, May they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to them and for the whole world. Thus may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ become your one people, brought to perfection in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
may the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
Joseph's. Yep. Right down here. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do, Imitate what you will celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, 
Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, my brother Kevin, bishop of this local church, me, your unworthy servant, with the order of bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as priests for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy of you to be the gentle but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, 
and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Good afternoon. My name is Father Jim Gallagher, and I have the honor of serving as the rector of Moreau Seminary and want to offer a few words of thanksgiving. First of all, to our brother, uh, Bishop Bill Walk, for joining us uh, and ordaining our brothers priests. It's always a pleasure and a joy to have you in our midst. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank for also being here uh, Bishop Bud Colgan, uh, Father Emmanuel, the first Assistant General for our congregation, and uh, Brother Ken Haters, the provincial for the Midwest Province of Brothers, but particularly our own provincial Bill Lees for all of your support for our men in formation. And for this beautiful liturgy, to thank uh, Father Peter Rocca, Brother Dennis, uh, Father Brian Ching, John Zach, and the whole Basilica crew, as well as our folk choir under the direction of J.J. Wright. Thank you all for this lovely liturgy. I'd also like to offer a deep, heartfelt word of thanksgiving to the families of these, our newest priests. For all of their friends and uh, colleagues, lay collaborators, students, everybody here to be with them, all who have walked with them along the way, helping them to become the men that they are so desirous of being witnesses and ministers of God's grace in the world. Thank you. As well as the words of thanks, I want to offer some more good news that we are nowhere near done yet. <laughs> well, the liturgy's nearly done, but uh, we have a reception in the main building uh, after this liturgy. I know after we process out, you'll want to try to catch our newly ordained somewhere here in the Basilica, but soon after they leave, we're going to swoop them back in to get pictures with their family. So I'm going to invite everybody who's not already been told you're going to be in a picture to go into the main building and wait there. As soon as they're done with the pictures, we'll get them right on over to you. But you may say to yourself, we are a large number of people, and they are a large number of people. How will I find the one I'm looking for? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> Those who have come, uh, I want to send to the, the main floor, the, the second floor, the main floor, uh, Fathers Kerr, Jakubowski, and Vetter will go there, main floor. Kerr, Jakubowski, Vetter. To the third floor will go Father Dolphin and Father Ryan. Third floor, Dolphin Ryan. And to the fourth floor, Fathers Puleo, Gaini, and Kripke. Uh, you can access the building just by going out there and up the main stairwell. Uh, if you have any sort of superstitions about doing that, you can enter through other entrances. If you need an elevator or a way to get up to those upper floors other than stairs, if you go around to the north end of the building, enter in through what looks like the back from here, there's an elevator there, and that will get you up. Again, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's lovely to have you all, and lovely to have these, our newest brother priests. with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace that you may faithfully discharge the duties of the priesthood. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation. 
and may he make you true shepherds to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.